How's it going crew? This is Happy Days and in this video I will be surviving 100 days in Terraria Hardcore Master Mode. Hardcore characters have one big difference over all the other character types. If you die with a hardcore character, that character is permanently deleted. As an added penalty in this challenge, if our character dies, I also have to delete our world so it doesn't matter how many rare items we have or how big our base is, if we get overwhelmed by mobs or crushed by a boulder, it's all over. To make this challenge extra difficult, we'll be dropping our character into a master mode world, which means enemies will have lots more health and deal tons more damage, as well as bosses having more deadly AI. This video was inspired by Luke the Notable's 100 Days Minecraft Hardcore series. With that said, let's get this crazy challenge started. It's day one and we spawn in a nice looking forest, so I immediately start destroying it. It's fairly safe during the day and I have the trusty guide to help deal with the evil slimes while I collect lots of wood. I build a glorious wooden box to help keep me safe and after adding a few doors and torches it should be quite cozy once the sun goes down. I'm definitely going to want a broadsword and bow to help smack these slimes and I'm told that wooden armor is better than bare skin and a few points of defense might be the difference between life and death in this challenge. It's way too dangerous to go outside at night so after locking the guide inside I decide to start digging a elevator. We did pretty well for our first day. I've got some basic equipment and a relatively safe house. All this stone I'm mining will be useful to get a good supply of arrows for my bow to keep me at a safe range from our enemies. We survive till the morning, day two, and after crafting some arrows, I explore to the right of our base to see what the land is like around us. It looks like there's a cave entrance near our base, so I cautiously peek my head in to grab the chest nearby and get some nice loot. I explore a little bit further and find a desert biome. The sands below contain some nice items, but are a little too deadly for me right now, so I grab some surface materials before returning to base. I add a second story to my house as the merchant NPC is available now that I have over 50 silver coins. I then spend the rest of the day chopping more trees as we need plenty of wood at this stage. That night I return to our mine and continue digging as we still need plenty of resources for our base and for upgrades. Day 3 begins and this time I head to the left of our base to see if there's anything useful nearby. I find another cave entrance and loot it before moving on. After crossing a potential fishing pond in the future I find a living tree. I check it out and find a few chests and pots to loot as well some furniture. I hang around trying to get a gnome to spawn and one chases me to the surface and turns into a garden gnome which will increase my luck when farming for rare items later in this challenge. It's late by the time I get back home so I return to our mine and spend the night collecting more resources. We begin day 4 by using all the ore we've been mining to get a few upgrades. At this stage I prioritize weapons and tools as they require far less bars to craft than armor and will help me explore a lot easier. Before heading out to explore I add 2 more rooms to our base. Now that I have grenades and a yellow marigold in my inventory, I can expect the demolitionist and die trader to move in soon. I head past the living trees I found earlier and find a little more loot before running into a crimson biome. There's no way I'll make it on the ground, so I platform my way over so I can continue exploring the world. After a few near misses, I stumble into a snow biome. I can't see any cave entrances, but I make sure to grab some ice to upgrade my arrows to frostburn arrows. That night, I find digging deeper is starting to pay off as I start to find larger veins of ore, which I happily mine up. Day 5 is here and I set out early to try and reach the edge of our world. Past the snow biome, I find an oasis which might be worth using as a fishing spot later to get pearls needed to craft luck potions. Close by the oasis we find the dungeon. I smash the pots at the entrance and although there's no water bolt inside I do find a water candle which will be useful for farming later on. Finally we reach the ocean and I find the angler snoozing on the sand. Extra NPCs will be critical for setting up a pylon network later on so I wake him up and then quickly chop some palm trees while I'm here. To help me manage my time I craft a silver watch before adding another two rooms to our base. When I'm underground it's kind of hard to tell how long I've been down there so the watch will help me better plan out my days. That night I can't believe my eyes as we find our first life crystal. I then continue mining up ores in preparation of our first underground mission. Early on day 6 I upgrade to a lead helmet and silver greaves and I even have enough rubies to craft a gem hook. I decide to ride an abandoned minecart track that goes through my elevator as this should help me avoid traps and lead to several underground cabins. It's really nerve wracking exploring such a dangerous area with low hit points but eventually I find some loot including a band of regen and a magic mirror. I see the blue glow of an underground mushroom biome but I decide not to push my luck and head back and mine all the ore I passed along the way. That night I craft a bed at a loom and after all this exploring I think we've earned a nice sleep in a comfy bed. After a well deserved sleep we start day 7 by making some improvements to our base. 
Up until now, we've just lived in some wooden boxes, but it would be nice to improve our town as this challenge continues. Later that day, I returned to the mushroom biome to carefully explore it. I swapped to my pressure plate often to check for any traps, and thankfully the biome seems clear. We get a ton of glowing mushrooms, as well as two life crystals for our trouble, so this was definitely worth checking out. I spend the rest of the day totally clearing the biome out of resources before heading to bed later that night. I start day 8 by once again destroying the forest around me. At this rate, we're going to be able to start tackling some of the early bosses and events like King Slime and the Goblin Army soon. Before that, however, we need to prepare the surrounding area to have a nice even surface to run on. It would be a total disaster to get caught on uneven ground while trying to escape mobs or a boss and die because of a block of dirt sticking out. It takes me most of the day, but now we have a nice clean slate to start building mob and boss arenas on. That night, while I'm mining, I find the stylus trapped in the spider biome. With so many NPCs, we'll be able to start to build our second base soon. I set out early on day 9 to explore the other edge of our world. I come across another living tree and quickly loot all the chests inside. We then stumble across a jungle biome. As tempted as I am to try and explore inside, it is certain death without better weapons, so I use the old platform trick from earlier to go over it. The jungle biome is right alongside a crimson biome so I keep the platform bridge going and slowly but surely we manage to get through. Soon enough we find the ocean and after cutting down a few more palm trees I yolo into the water and grab a sea chest before recalling back to base. That night I continue mining out the halivator. I'm more than halfway to the underworld now so we'll be seeing lava soon. It's day 10 and we've managed not to die yet. After all that mining we've been doing I can finally get a full suit of silver armor. I don't usually bother that much with armor early on, but remember, this is hardcore mode. If we die, it's all over. Using some of the stone I've mined, I add some extra defenses around the outside of my base. The last thing we need is an NPC leaving the doors open at night and a zombie sneaks in for some midnight brains. I then get a basic urban potion farm started. I'd like to make a proper greenhouse later on, but for now, I just need a basic supply of materials to craft things like shine potions to help me explore. It's pretty late by the time I finish everything, so I decide to go to bed early, ready for a big day to tomorrow. Armed with my new supply of shine potions, I continue exploring on day 11 past the mushroom biome to see where else the abandoned mine track leads. Soon I barrel into a marble biome and get surrounded by enemies with a deadly hoplite leading the charge. I barely escape with my life and lock myself in an underground cabin to heal up while slowly getting rid of the monsters. Later on, I find another hoplite guarding two life crystals, but thankfully this one is alone, so I quickly deal with him and claim my prizes. That night, I felt an evil presence watching me, but there is no way I'm ready for a boss fight, so I quickly fled underground and worked on my halivator some more. I mightn't be ready for a boss fight just yet, but I definitely think the goblins are getting within my reach, so I start day 12 by heading past the dungeon to farm some goblin scouts. Goblins scouts are an uncommon enemy type, but the water candle we got earlier helps boost the spawn rate, so I spend the afternoon chopping some trees, fighting scouts, and collecting gel. That night, armed with sticky bombs, I start clearing an area out in the cavern layer that I think will be a perfect spot for our next base. Day 13 begins with me taking to the skies by drinking a gravitation potion I found while exploring. The first island we find contains a pair of fledgling wings, which is a huge find, as it means I can't die from fall damage while wearing them. Our next island contains a massive score as we open a chest to find a legendary star fury. If I can find some feral claws in the jungle, this weapon will be an absolute beast. I try to find a third island, but the harpies are slowly starting to build up, and considering I already have some nice loot, it's time to move on. That night, I continue mining to get some more resources for our next base. It's raining at the start of day 14, but thankfully we can deal with the slightly stronger rain enemies now. As we're about to fight the goblins, I start to prepare a basic arena to the left of my base. I have have to be careful as once the goblins are summoned, they won't stop attacking until I either defeat them or I die. I dig a small pit for them to fall into and build a safety box above it in case the goblin archer fire gets too much. I place a few campfires around and fingers crossed I've done enough for the upcoming battle. Once it gets dark, I start landscaping a comfy area for our cavern base. I even found a huge pool of water at the bottom which will make a perfect fishing spot. Day 15 is here and it's time for our first big battle. I buy a bunch of grenades from the demolitionists and craft some iron skin, regeneration and swiftness potions and summon the goblin army. The main dangers are the goblin archers and sorcerers as they deal big damage in master mode for this early in the game and they tend to stack up so you have to avoid multiple 
multiple projectiles from all angles. I do have a few near misses as my health drops low a few times, but our grappling hook and wings help me quickly escape certain doom. The battle goes on for most of the day, but eventually the goblins are defeated, which means I can now find the goblin tinkerer NPC underground. That night I take it easy with some more mining underground and even find another life crystal along the way. I start day 16 by opening all the herb bags we've collected on our journey. I need fire blossom to make obsidian skin potions, which I'll need for today's mission. Today I want to finish off our elevator to the underworld so I can start to work on new projects during the night time. It takes most of the day, but later that night we bust through the last of the ash blocks and we finally reach the underworld. Day 17 starts with a surprise as I find the bound goblin being attacked by the evil hoplites. I frantically swing my star fury hoping the goblin survives and soon enough the hoplites fall. I grab a pair of rocket boots and a tinkerer's workshop before continuing on. After looting an underground cabin I see the sparkle of another life crystal and happily snap it up. That night I continue work on our cabin base. It's a basic design to start with but I hope to improve it as our journey continues. After grabbing all the wood I've collected so far, day 18 sees me setting up some temporary NPC housing. I want to buy pylons from the NPCs but they need to be happy to sell them. This requires not having more than two or three NPCs being in a base to ensure that they have maximum happiness. This mini base will allow me to juggle NPCs by temporarily moving them here so I can buy the pylons I need and then move them back to their respective homes. That night I sneak into the jungle biome. It's really dangerous but I need to get my hands on some moon glow to make spelunker potions for our upcoming exploration. Day 19 is here and it's pylon time. I purchase the forest pylon from the merchant NPC and place it near our main base. I then head to our cavern base and purchase the cavern pylon from the stylus NPC as living near the die trader makes her happy and place it down. I can now teleport instantly between our two bases for quick access to the underground as well as our fishing spot here. After chopping trees in the afternoon I do one last loot run in the underground as we're about to explore a new biome. I find a granite cave and although my health gets quite low fighting a few golems I do find a cloud in a bottle which is a great accessory boosting my movement. If we're going to start fighting some bosses we'll need better weapons so day 20 begins by starting to explore the depths of the ice biome. I dig straight down as I can't find a cave entrance and soon enough we find our first frozen chest which has some ice gates in it. Later that night I brave the snow enemies and do some basic landscaping as this area would make a perfect spot for a snow base. I start day 21 by building an outpost in the snow biome. Having extra pylons around the world will help save a lot of time by allowing me to teleport around our world. I'm just starting the roof as it's getting dark. It's far easier to build during the daylight so I put my materials away and return to the underground ice for some more looting. As I continue to mine down my spelunker potion spots a frozen chest and inside is a snowball cannon. This will be a massive help against the upcoming boss fights. Before I know it I've spent most of day 22 finishing my snow outpost. I'll add some more details to it later but for now it's a nice home away from home. I continue exploring that night finding even more loot as I'll need to reforge my equipment before we fight any bosses which is really expensive. On day 23 I started an underground minecart station that will connect to most of the major biomes in our world via a secure minecart track. Although pylons are really useful for connecting to your main bases, a track like this will give me quick access to tons of materials underground that I'll need to survive this challenge. I spend most of the day setting up the main hub area and filling in nearby open spaces so mobs can't spawn near me while I'm trying to work. I start day 24 by crafting two platinum crowns. We're about to challenge our first boss but before that we'll need to go on our first crimson raid. I chug a featherfall potion to allow me to slowly glide into the crimson as my wing flight time is extremely limited. We find a crimson altar and I quickly craft two slime crowns before blocking a side passage from all the mobs. Mobs. I may as well smash a few crimson hearts while I'm here to get my hands on some more loot. That night I find an ice blade while I'm exploring and then a nice fairy leads me to a life crystal. Day 25 is here and it's time for a boss fight. I quickly combine a few accessories and then craft a suit of platinum armor and some stained glass to sell for reforging costs. I then visit the goblin and just take the first decent modifier I can get for each accessory and weapon to help boost our chances of surviving this battle. I head to my arena and summon the king slime. I keep my distance using all my ranged weapons to deal damage while lobbing the occasional grenade to help clear the summoned slimes. The combination of our wings, boots and hook give me tons of mobility so I can safely avoid most of the king's attacks. Finally the giant slime falls and I grab our first relic as well as some nice loot from the treasure bag. I decide to farm a second slime since the fight went fairly well and now we have a full ninja armor set. That night I think we've deserved a rest as a reward for our first major victory in hardcore mode. Happy that I survived our first boss battle I start day 26 by continuing 
continuing our minecart track. With the Spelunka potion active, it will make sure I don't miss any loot along the way. I check my map and this is a full day's worth of digging in Terraria, which is totally not as much as I thought I did and not disappointing at all. Yet I stick at it and on day 27 after bumping into the dungeon, which I don't dare enter yet, I finished the mining and laid down the minecart track. I even find a few undead miners along the way, which drop the mining armor set, which is going to be massively useful with this project. After purchasing a mining helmet from the merchant, I start day 28 by tackling the right side of our minecart track. I only want to reach the underground jungle at this stage and with our new mining set boosting my mining speed I easily reach it by night time. I even find the golfer NPC while placing down some minecart track and almost die in the process of rescuing him. After recovering from my near death experience I spend day 29 securing the minecart track. This comes in two parts. I spend this first day ensuring that the ceiling and ground are covered which will stop most mobs from entering the track from the outside. Then on day 30 I need to place walls inside the track area. In Terraria, mobs cannot spawn in front of walls placed by the player, so this should make me mostly safe while riding my minecart. I didn't realize how huge this job was going to be, but the end is finally in sight now. After placing more walls and torches on day 31, our minecart track is mostly finished. I'm sure I've missed a spot here and there, but now we have a safe and secure way to visit most of the main biomes in our world while underground. Day 32 is here and I want to start exploring new biomes, but all that building has depleted my material supplies. I spend the day destroying every tree in my world to get my wood stores back up. That night I visit the golfer in the snow biome to buy a lawnmower and finally get our snow pylon. I start day 33 by flattening out an area for our future desert town, then I dig down into the underground desert biome. This is a really dangerous biome early on, so my first goal is to use bombs to help clear a central area that gives me easier access to the numerous side tunnels. I'd love a desert pylon to quickly access the desert, so I start day 34 by building a desert base. I start with a basic design that I can add to as we unlock more blocks during our adventure. Later that day I start to carefully explore the underground sands. I have to be careful with the rolling cactus boulders as they can deal over 300 damage in master mode. I spend the night slowly clearing out the area and collecting all the loot I can get along the way. I start day 35 waking up in my desert base. The arms dealer has moved in so I can buy a desert pylon from him now so I can easily teleport here when I need to. I spend the day cautiously exploring the underground desert. It. This biome is huge, but there's plenty of life crystals down here, so if I take it slow, I can boost my HP quite a bit and even get some extras for heart lanterns. That night, a blood moon spawns, so I head back to my arena to fight it. I've got a chest ready with some grenades and buff potions to maximize the mob killing. Our wings help me stay fairly safe, and we managed to get a few nice items like the money trough and a shark tooth necklace. With more boss fights on the horizon, it's time to boost my buff potion supplies. I start day 36 by visiting the fishing spot under my cavern base and get casting. I'm trying to catch armored cave fish, which are used to make endurance potions, as well as any crates I can get my hands on. Day 37 finds me flying through the skies with a gravitation potion to find a sky lake to fish in. You can catch damselfish when fishing in the space biome which are used to craft calming potions which will help a ton when I start exploring the jungle by lowering the mob's spawn rates. The fishing continues on day 38 as I return to the large pool of water I notice in the crimson biome. I can catch hemo piranhas and crimson tiger fish here for heart reach and rage potions. I start day 39 by opening all the crates we got from fishing. I get a nice assortment of loot including some ores and potions and extra stuff to sell. I then spend the rest of the day back in the underground desert looking for even more loot. Day 40 continues with me in the desert. I found several massive veins of desert fossils which will allow me to craft some powerful throwing weapons so I gladly mine them all up. Later that night I buy a mini shark and the illegal gun parts from the arms dealer. The mini shark should be useful against the Eye of Cthulhu. I've been collecting so much loot storage is becoming an issue so I start day 41 by continuing to expand our main base. I've also added four ultimate for each class as this way I can keep my best current weapons, armor, and accessories for each class type in one easy to access spot. Building can be a lot of fun in Terraria and before I know it we're already well into day 42 as I continue to expand our base upwards. I'm not the best builder in the world but I think it looks okay for now and we can always add more decorations and better blocks to it later. I spend the rest of the night sorting out overflowing items into their designated areas before moving on with our adventure. We're about to fight the Eye of Cthulhu so I start day 43 by preparing a suitable arena for it. I start by removing my previous arena as this will eventually become an old one's army battleground. I then build too much longer platforms in the sky. Bosses can move very fast in master mode so having plenty of runway is essential to surviving. It takes me most of the day to get it done but I'm pretty happy with how the arenas turned out. It's day 44 and it's time to prepare our equipment for the upcoming battle. I start by 
processing all of our desert fossils to collect sturdy fossils. Then I upgrade several of our ammunition types and craft more stained glass from our excess gems to sell for cash. We then visit the goblin and try and get some nice modifiers for our equipment without spending too much of our dwindling money. Short on cash, I spend the rest of the day spelunking to try and get some more loot to sell. Day 45 is here and we're fighting the Eye of Cthulhu tonight, so I take the day easy by spending my time chopping some trees and restocking my wood supplies. That night, I throw on my buffs and nervously raise a suspicious looking eye into the air to summon our next boss. Our new bone javelins actually stick to the boss dealing extra damage over time and our bone knives pierce which helps deal with the boss's summons. Building the long arena really pays off in its second form allowing me to mostly outrun its charge attacks and the speed of our mini shark keeps up with the rapid dashes of the boss. Soon enough the eye is destroyed and we get our prizes as well as a new pet. With my buff still active I decide to keep farming the night away with a few more eyes. I start day 46 by using all the crimtain ore we got from the eyes to upgrade some of our equipment. After drinking a gravitation potion I fly around looking for a floating island to set up a surface mushroom base but I don't find one in a good spot so I decide to build my own. I start by blowing up a nearby floating island as I might like to use some of the clouds in my design and the extra blocks are always helpful. I had to return to base for some more explosives and it's late at night by the time I finally finish. It's day 47 and it's time to start building the island our future base will be on. Even with the calming potion active the harpy swarms are a huge nuisance but our mini shark deals with them quite quickly. Later that night, I add some waterfalls to the underside of the island and we're about ready to start building the base. I return to the underground mushroom biome to start day 48 and collect a ton of mushrooms to build our new base with. After crafting some peace candles and buying some sunflowers from the newly spawned dryad, I finally lower the harpy population to work on our new base. I've got the basic structure mostly finished by night time, which is enough to get two NPCs to move in for a pylon. And with the stylist and die trader moved in, I grab our next pylon, further expanding our network. It's day 49 and now that our pylon network has a decent coverage of the overworld I start the day by removing the platform bridges I placed everywhere as I no longer need them. It takes me most of the day but eventually I've got everything cleared up. Day 50 is here and it's time to upgrade our poor little potion farm. I start by building a large glass dome over a nice looking fishing spot I found earlier. I then start working on a huge greenhouse to put our seeds in. I've been pretty lucky to not need a lot of buffs so far but that will quickly change as we approach hard mode. I continue working on our new potion farm on day Day 51. I'm having a lot of fun adding some decorations to it and before I know it most of the day has passed. That night I start the process of moving over my potion supplies from our main base to start growing herbs. On day 52 I officially start our new farm by planting all the seeds that I've got. It's taken a while but now I have plenty of room to grow more of each plant type. That night I go spelunking and get my hands on a slime statue. A slime staff would be super useful for a money farm later so I'm glad to have found this. It's raining super hard on day 53 but that's fine as last night I noticed I still haven't fully finished sealing my halivator yet. By the early hours of the morning I've finally secured the entire halivator to the underworld. I start day 54 by heading to the underground crimson to start preparing an arena to battle the brain of Cthulhu. Using explosives I widen the chamber to help avoid its attacks during the battle. I also use wood to block the side passages so mobs can't get into the arena as easily. It takes me a while to set everything up but eventually I think I'm ready for a showdown. After grabbing some buff potions I make my way back to the crimson for our next boss battle. I throw a sticky bomb on the third heart and start the battle. I use jester arrows with my bow as they pierce all the creeper minions and quickly take them out. Once they're all defeated, the brain attacks me directly by teleporting around and summoning illusions. Quick weapons like the mini shark are perfect here as the brain is susceptible to knockback. Soon enough, the brain falls and we collect a ton of materials as our prize. I have the components to make some bloody spines which summons more brains, so I spend the rest of the day farming. That night, I sleep in my bed as a meteorite hurtles towards the earth which means there's new ore to mine up now. We start day 56 by upgrading to Crimson Armor which gives us some bonus damage and life regeneration. I then head to the jungle and start collecting resources on the surface. I'll need to get a base started if I want a jungle pylon and all this bamboo and rich mahogany wood will make it look fantastic. That night I start hollowing out a hill on the edge of the jungle which will make a secure location for our future base. After collecting some more resources at the start of day 57 I start construction on my jungle huts. Like the other bases I've built so far I'll just get the basics down for now as we can always expand on them later. I continue to work through the night adding walls to the houses so I can soon get some NPCs to move in and get that pylon. I spend day 58 finishing off our jungle base by adding more walls and furniture. 
That night, with the Dryad and Painter NPCs moved in, I buy a jungle pylon to give me quick access to the underground jungle. I start day 59 by exploring the underground jungle. I find some living mahogany trees and jungle shrines and happily grab all the loot I can carry. Not wanting to push my luck though, I spend the night sleeping in my new base so I'm ready for more exploring tomorrow. I continue exploring the underground jungle on day 60. When riding a minecart track, I discover the location of the lizard temple which will be good to know for later on. I explore throughout the night collecting that sweet, sweet sweet loot, but some enemies get me really low on health, so I decide to retreat for now. I spent day 61, you guessed it, grabbing even more loot from the jungle. There's a lot of upgrades available from the items in here which will be useful for the upcoming Queen Bee fight. Day 62 begins with me using my money trough to get our loot back to our main base. I've done a ton of spelunking and there's plenty of items in my extra bases waiting to be sorted. Later that night I notice I've got some extra items that I would really like to display somewhere. Maybe I'll build a museum in the near future, but I'll store them in this chest for now. With our new staff of regrowth, I visit our potion farm on day 63 to harvest all of our herbs. The staff will also be really useful for collecting rare herbs around the world when I'm out exploring. That night I do a quick bit of fishing to replenish my fish supplies so I can craft lots of buff potions. I start day 64 by mining into the beehive I found while exploring. The queen bee has tons of useful drops, but it can also be a dangerous boss in master mode, so I'll need plenty of room to fight it in. Later that night I upgrade to frost spark boots and then visit the goblin tinkerer to reforge all of my equipment. It's day 65 and it's time for our next boss battle against the Queen Bee. I hurl bone javelins at it for some damage over time and then use our boom stick when it hovers in place for some big damage. If I time it just right, I can use the Shield of Cthulhu to negate the bee's charge damage by dashing into it and our Beezor accessory gives me immunity to poison which is a huge help in this battle. Our arena gives me plenty of room to avoid its attacks and I make sure to clear all the tiny bees it spawns to avoid the extra damage and soon enough the huge bee falls and I get a bee gun for our prize. As most of my buffs are still active, I spend the rest of the day farming lots of queen bees for even more loot, including the beekeeper and the bee's knees, some nice weapons for our future battles. After sorting all of my bee loot on day 66, I head to the ocean to set up our first ocean base. I start by making a fishing bridge over the water before starting on the base itself. It takes me most of the day, but later that night I have the framework for the house mostly complete. I continue working on my seaside retreat on day 67 by adding some walls and furniture to make it nice for some NPCs to to move in. That night I move in the witch doctor and the zoologist and add the ocean pylon to our collection. I start day 68 by building a blood moon arena next to our ocean base. This will only be temporary but it will allow me to fish in safety while I roast the basic mobs in a lava bath. That night I use a bloody tear to start the blood moon and test out our new design. Our new bee weapons do well against the mobs and I score another shark tooth necklace and chum caster fishing rod. Just as the night is ending the last wandering eye fish drops the vampire frog staff to cap off a successful night of farming. After sorting all my loot, I start day 69 by visiting the tavern keep I rescued earlier. I buy an Eternia crystal stand and some Eternia crystals so I can challenge the Old Ones army event before heading to our old arena. I start by placing the crystal stand down and then removing all the trees in the area. This event requires a long flat arena on the ground and it's a good idea to fill it with regeneration items. It's pretty late by the time I'm finished, but I'm really happy with how it's turned out. I start day 70 by preparing a fishing spot in the underground jungle. I think what better way to fight a summoner event by turning turning into a summoner myself, so I want to catch variegated loudfish to make summoning potions. I continue fishing throughout the night with my new fishing rod catching all the fish I can haul in. It's day 71 and our next step to powering up is mining up a bunch of obsidian underground. Not only is it used to craft obsidian skin potions that I'll need very soon for the underworld biome, but I can also craft a powerful summoner armor set with it too. An easy way to do this is to use the water duplication glitch to pour an endless amount of water into the lava pools and make tons of obsidian. It takes me most of the day but I do get the materials that I need. I'm about to spend a ton of money on reforging, so I spend day 72 doing a quick loot run underground to see what I can find. I also quickly stop by the underworld to pick up a hellforge. I'm not quite ready to explore here just yet, so I just get the forge and run. That night I craft the obsidian armor and snapthorn whip before visiting the goblin tinkerer for some upgrades ahead of our next big battle. After grabbing some buff potions from my potion farm, I start day 73 by beginning the old one's army event. The first few waves aren't too bad as long as you collect crystals and spawn more sentry summons along the way. That said, I need to play it safe during wave 5 as this is when the dark mage spawns and it can deal some big damage in master mode. Still, I use my ranged weapons to stay out of danger and soon enough the mage falls and we've cleared the event but sadly I don't get the dark mage's tome so I spend the day retrying the event. That night a blood moon spawns while I'm defeating the second event and the dark mage drops our new mounds. I start day 74 by fighting more of the old one's army. You get 5 defenders medals each time you clear the event 
and getting 25 medals can give you an early power boost on the next level of the event in hard mode. It takes me the whole day, but I finally have 25 medals and some loot, so I think I've earned a quick sleep in bed that night. It's day 75, and I'd like to challenge Skeletron soon to unlock the dungeon, but we can grab a few upgrades before we do that. I first head to the meteorite crash site and start mining up the ore. My frog summons keep me safe from the meteor heads, allowing me to mine in relative safety. That night I get started working on a sky bridge across my world. Fallen stars are used as ammo in the star cannon, and I'll need a lot of them if I'm going to use it, so a simple runway will make it easy to collect them each night. NPCs can sell several useful items if they live in a graveyard, so I start day 76 by building the future site of my graveyard biome, and what better place than near the dungeon? I spend most of the day building the framework of the base before continuing my sky bridge that night. Construction of our graveyard continues on day 77, and I'm now placing the walls and furniture in. I'm also using paints to help give the area a spooky vibe. That night, I keep collecting even more fallen stars on my now completed sky bridge. My graveyard is still missing one thing, and that is tombstones. So I start day 78 by giving some NPCs a nice hot lava bath, as they'll drop a tombstone when they die if a hardcore character is in the world. Using some existing wiring and a queen statue, I can invite the NPCs for some lunch and collect their tombstones after I drain the lava. That night, I upgrade my mini shark to the star cannon, as well as craft a meteor ham axe and their meteor armor set. It's day 79, and I'm planning to battle our next boss, Skeletron, tomorrow, so I start by harvesting my plants in the greenhouse. I've put barrels at the end of the planter boxes to store all the extra seeds in. I then do a little bit more fishing throughout the night, as I'm totally going to need more buff potions for Skeletron in the dungeon. I get an early start on day 80, constructing an arena above the dungeon to battle Skeletron. I build two rows of platforms to grapple between and add the usual regen furniture items. That night, I talk to the old man and start the battle. Mobility is key against Skeletron in master mode, and the combination of our wings, grappling hook, and shield dash allow me to keep well ahead of the skull. Our high pack accessory boosts all of our B weapons, so I bring some B nades to the battle to complement our B's knees and B gun while I throw in some boomstick and star cannon when I get a clear shot. The summon B's keep constant damage on Skeletron, so I can mostly focus on dodging, and soon enough the skull falls and we get a new magic weapon for our troubles. It's day 81 and the dungeon is finally unlocked. I spend the day searching for golden keys so I can start unlocking the numerous chests that you can find in the dungeon. I find the mechanic early on and I quickly rescue her. There is so much wiring I want to do now that I can access wrenches, but I'll leave that till I finish looting the dungeon first. I keep exploring the dungeon on day 82. I'm taking it slow and disabling traps and covering spike pits as I explore, which might not seem that necessary, but remember, this is hardcore and if I get caught by surprise, this adventure is over. I take time to farm mobs as I go, as they can drop extra golden keys, which takes up the rest of the day. The dungeon still hasn't killed me yet on day 83 as I grab even more loot. I've gotten most of the key items the dungeon has to offer by night time, so I decide it's time to press on with our challenge. I start day 84 by grabbing the main loot from a chest near our graveyard. I then place down the tombstones I was kindly given by the NPCs earlier to create a graveyard biome. The arms dealer sells me the quad barreled shotgun, which is a nice upgrade to our boon stick. All this building has depleted my core material supply, so I spend the rest of the day stocking up on wood and stone. It's day 85 and I visit the mechanic and buy a bunch of wiring tools as I've got several projects I want to start. I head just near our potion farm to set up our first liquid generator. Having access to plenty of water, honey, and lava, as well as the combination blocks they make is super useful. After making three large tanks, I wire an on-off valve at the base so I can combine the three liquids together. Then I duplicate each of the liquids using the bucket trick. It's not the fastest method, but soon I'll get access to liquid bombs to rapidly fill up the tanks. Hard mode is fast approaching, and I'm going to want plenty of cash before I start it, so on day 86, I put on my mining armor and head to the underworld, ready to mine up a ton of hellstone ore. Not only are there plenty of upgrades available with this new ore, when it's turned into bars, it also sells for a decent amount of cash. Day 87 begins, and you know I'm back in the lava mining up more hellstone. If I mine all day today too, I should have more than enough ore for my needs. I'll make sure to grab a bit of obsidian too during the night, as it's needed to craft hellstone bars. When hard mode starts, my crimson biomes will start to spread out, so on day 88, I'm going to start building containment barriers around them. I get started by purifying the grass that is spread outwards from the crimson using purification powder from the dryad. I then use bombs to form a wide tunnel downwards, separating the crimson from the jungle. The crimson can't spread further than six blocks away, so as long as I line the tunnels with uncorruptible blocks, this will safely contain it. That night, I connect the two vertical tunnels by digging horizontally to connect them using my mining armor. On day 89, I dig the same tunnels on the other crimson biome in my world. You know what this looks like by now, so I'm going to skip ahead to the next day. It's day 90 and I have a quick look at my map. I've dug two big barriers around the crimson. I eventually want to place walls and sides in them, but 
our work for now. We're starting to collect a fair amount of relics, so I decide to build a relic shrine near our base. I'll make a fancier one later when I've got some more building materials, but I'm just happy I've got a place to nicely store my relics for now. After selling some stained glass to the demolitionist, I buy a bunch of explosives for the next day. After digging out a perimeter on day 91, I start blowing up a large area under my minecart station. Preparing a hard mode farm in pre-hard mode is much safer than attempting to do it while being attacked by hard mode mobs. By night, I've managed to excavate the whole area and all that's left to do now is set up the farm. After filling a few gaps around the farm, I start day 92 by setting up a bed of stone blocks protected by wooden blocks that can't be corrupted. This will allow me to control what biome is present in the farm, allowing me to farm corruption, crimson, hallow, and normal mobs in hard mode. Setting up this farm was a lot of work, but by the end of the day, it's finally ready for action. It's day 93 and it's time to explore the underworld. After grabbing my shadow key and buying a safe from the merchant to store extra loot, I start smashing my way through the ruined houses, grabbing everything I can. I've never actually tried to completely loot the underworld before, so I'm kind of interested to see how much loot we actually end up with. The looting continues on day 94 as I make sure to grab every shadow chest I can. Our water walking potion makes exploration a breeze as it allows me to stand on lava in between the houses. After fully looting the underworld, I separate all the loot into different chests, and as you can see, we got a nice selection of weapons, potions, and extra materials, as well as just under two platinum in cash. If we actually make it to hard mode, I'll want to money farm as soon as possible, so I start day 95 by setting up a nice hot bath for some slimes. With my slime statue sitting in the lava set to a timer, all I need to do is stand underneath it and wait for the staff to drop. Later that night, I'm starting to question my sanity, but at least I know I'll never need to farm gel ever again. It's day 96 and I keep adding to my mountain of gel. I glare at the slime statue and tell it to drop the staff, but it just totally ignores me. At night, the sound of exploding slimes is starting to creep into my brain and I'm worried I'll go mad before this challenge is over and we still get no slime staff. Day 97 is here and finally, just as I was about to give up, I see the slime staff in my hotbar. I immediately jump around like crazy before unleashing a slime apocalypse on the mobs nearby. Our wall of flesh battle is fast approaching, so I spend day 98 upgrading my equipment. I'm not sure what class I'll use against the giant wall, so I craft a set of molten armor and necro armor to go with my obsidian and space set, so all four classes are represented. I then head to the crimson to forge the powerful knight's edge sword, which can be further upgraded in hard mode. After selling all the extra loot I've been stockpiling, I try and get some high tier modifiers on my weapons, and I'll spend any extra gold I've got improving my accessories. It's day 99, and I head to the underworld to start building a runway for the wall of flesh. I build a long bridge made of ash blocks and line it with plenty of regen items like honey, heart lanterns, and campfires. I spend the whole day making it as long as possible, because if I don't defeat the boss before the runway ends, it's going to be a massive fail on day 100. I'm really nervous as we begin day 100. I've equipped my necro armor to boost my range damage and return to the underworld armed to the teeth and with every buff potion I can get my hands on. I throw the voodoo doll into the lava and summon the wall of flesh. I start by firing my hellwing bow and lob several b nades to keep the hungries busy. I also rotate between my shotgun and star cannon to keep the damage ticking away on the boss. The giant wall starts charging fast as its health gets lower and lower, but I keep firing and soon it's destroyed. I happily grab the loot and use the demon heart for a seventh accessory slot. There's still a lot to do now, hard mode has begun, and if you guys want to see me go to 200 days, make sure to like this video and subscribe. And with that said, that night I fall into bed as lanterns fly in the sky and a slime bounces on my head as hard mode has well and truly begun. Well, that's the end of our 100 days in hardcore Terraria. We managed to explore most of the world while powering up and taking down the pre-hard mode bosses as we went. I'm happy with what we achieved in 100 days. We didn't take any risks and rush to the Moon Lord, but if we go for 200 days, we might make it to that ultimate battle. I really had fun building in our world, and there's so much potential to improve it now that hard mode is here. So if you'd like to see this challenge go for another 100 days in hard mode, make sure to leave a like on this video and comment on what I should build next. And here's the most important part as always, you'll stay happy and I'll see you soon. This is Happy Days signing out. See ya!